I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters, and today we're here talking about real estate investing. So today we're talking about real estate investing and some different options that are out there. Now, everybody's heard about flips. You see them on TV all the time. They talk about those flipping shows. And also, you know, everybody kind of knows about the traditional methods where you go and buy your property, then maybe go buy something else and rent out your current property and keep building from there. Um, today, we're here talking about some other alternative ways to invest in real estate as well with Jonathan Marshall of Bella Vita Property Investments. And one of the methods that he brings to the table is trustee investing. And with that, you know, as, as somebody who may not have heard of trustee investing, what are some things that people may want to think about when they're looking at the options of doing trustee investing? I, I would start with determining what it is you hope to achieve with your investment. Uh, well, what are the terms? How long do you want your money out? Do you want it liquid back in your hands in a year or two? Or is this a retirement type of an investment where you're not going to see it for years and years and years? So you bring up, you know, the investments where people you know, hold them, they maybe rent them out. Now, that's, I like that as a leading example because people are naturally, perhaps, more comfortably associating with these where it's a buy and hold for maybe appreciation, but also the cash flow from the rental income from renting this place out. Mm -hmm. So that basically hits the two points. Do you want to do one of those two or maybe both? Do you want to have cash flow on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, maybe annual? Or do you want to look at only appreciation, if not both cases? But the neat thing is, is you're not limited to just residential properties. The downside, I think, to those are it's a single family home, maybe a duplex, you're renting it out. Uh, the chance for vacancy is extremely high. You lose your tenant, you can go from 100% you know, occupancy to 0% occupancy. Right, you have a lot more risk there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or a duplex, you can go down to 50% before you know it. So a lot of people may look at you know, larger commercial projects like an apartment complex and think this is big, it's scary. But you know the thing is, is if you're looking at investing money, whether it's your own alone or you're pooling with other people to get into a big, bigger project, the larger multi-tenant complexes can sometimes be more, more, a little more safer, more secure because the chance for vacancy is a lot, you know, a lot more slim. You may lose. 10 people on a 100 unit complex and you're, you're still at 90% occupancy. So it's a very nice deal at that point. And maybe you're not hurting on income. So you look at these income type properties and you have this potential to keep your investments more secured and offset a lot of the costs. Because if you have to go out there and work on that project, you know, bring in a backhoe for whatever reason to work that property, it's going to cost the same amount to get that backhoe, whether it's a 100 unit apartment complex or a single family house. So with that being said, if someone is coming into an investment project um, like in trustee investing where they can put their money in there, maybe not purchasing the property directly, but they're doing the financing end of things, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the other options that they have, should look at if they're thinking about doing something like that? Options as in financing? Uh, options as far as um, how long a time frame, um, are they, mm -hmm. um, is that something that's more long term, short term, what are they thinking about there? Well, it depends on the project. Sometimes the residential things you see, rehabs, people are refinancing out of a rehab. Maybe their investment money it went dry or their original investor has to pull out. So a lot of times you get these opportunities to bring money into an investment very short term. It may be six months to a year, um, especially on those types of applications. But then you get into these other ones, commercial projects and you know office investments, warehouse investments. These types of commercial projects, you may expect to go two, three to five years out before the expected cycle and exit strategy kicks in. So you have this range on the situation. Is this a situation where it just naturally lends to a short term? Or is it an application such as rehab where it's naturally a short term type of investment? Or is it a more of a commercial application where you expect it to be longer term? But even some commercial ones, I was just looking at one that was scheduled to start this summer and be completed in a year and a half. So this was a large multi-unit building in the heart of South San Francisco. Um, they're looking basically to revitalize an existing building. So not a complete demo, basically it's a rehab, but on a commercial level, and they go and pre-sell these, these units and can realize the investment payback within a short period of time. Nice, and you get to help out the community as well. 
that's a big cool part of it. Yeah, you get to pick and choose these things and say, look, I like this project because it's part of the revitalization versus just the returns. Right, that's great. Well, if someone wants to reach you and has more questions, where should they reach you at? They can reach me on my phone, 562-216-3227. Otherwise, the website's bellavitapi.com. Excellent. And of course, if you have any questions about this or any other real estate questions, feel free to give me a call at 562-316-2915. Or you can reach me at melinda at theelmerteam.com. Thanks so much for watching, and please feel free to share with your friends.